I did a little research and I found out that this is the way they asked the question on the regions, which is insane because it's completely wrong. You, you don't solve a quadratic when it's in general terms. You only solve it when it's equal to something, right? So when they say solve, they mean find the roots, but they're saying it incorrectly. Um, I'll, still, I'll still take typo bonus I'll still take typo bonus every single time you see solve. Remember, you can get a, a, as many as three bonus points for this. So, yeah. Now, that one I think is fine, though. Because I think it's, yeah, it says equal to zero, so that one's okay. But anytime it's y equals and it says solve, it's incorrect. Right? Because it's like solve it for what? Right? Uh, what they mean to say is find the roots, but I think somebody in the state is trying to be cute and make you think or understand that solve means find the roots, but that's not true, right? Because this could very easily say, solve the equation for when y is equal to 20. Yeah, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a correct way of phrasing the problem, but that's how they might, they, they definitely ask it like that on the regions. Um, even though it's incorrect, all right? So I have my coordinates, negative four, zero. You know, just take a quick look and make sure that those points will fit on your graph before you start plotting things in pen. If you're using pen, if you're using pencil, you'll be all right. And on the regions, you're supposed to write everything in pen except for graphs, all right? So you could do your graphs in pencil, which I think makes sense. But what happens is people will write their graphs in pencil then forget that they're using pencil and then write the rest of the exam in pencil. And then what happens is if a teacher doesn't pick that up before you leave the exam room, you're home relaxing, feeling like, okay, I'm done with school for the year. And then you get a phone call saying you got to come back to the school to trace over your exam in pen. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, the rationale behind it is, oh, well, it would never happen here, but there were, there were some schools that were for the purpose of their you know, teachers and administrator job security. They were um, taking students' exams, erasing the wrong answers, and writing the correct ones in, which is completely illegal, but they were doing it anyway. So they made those rules so that other people can't change your wrong answers into correct answers. You're probably all right with that, but uh, the law isn't, all right? So, it's got to be done. The most of the exam has to be done in pen. Your graphs could be done in pencil. I recommend doing the whole thing in pen so you don't forget. All right. But if that's the case, you got to be really careful when you're creating the graphs. Otherwise, you're going to run into a problem. So one, two, three, four, negative four, zero is the point. Uh, what do we got there? Negative three, negative five. Negative two, negative eight. Negative one, negative nine, and and so on, back the other way. All right. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that when you plot a parabola, even if the points on your graph don't actually cross the x-axis, so you go to your table and you get a bunch of points, and they don't cross the x-axis. Maybe you're just kind of living down in the, the, the four quadrant here, you know, and opening upwards. You still have to make your graph cross the x-axis if it's supposed to, all right? So you have to continue your graph at least until it goes through the x-axis, otherwise it's incomplete, all right? So always think to yourself, if the roots exist, you need to have a graph that goes through the x-axis and also goes through the y-axis. If you have those things in place, then you have a complete graph, assuming your points are correct. If you don't, then you're going to lose credit. Right? I don't like taking off points for that because I think it's simple enough to get that stuff correct. You don't want to be throwing those points away. All right, so my roots are x such that x is equal to what and what? 
negative 4, 0. All right. Now, we also have to solve it algebraically. Actually, we have to solve it. I don't know if it's, yeah, it says algebraically. All right, so all you're doing is count, oh, not zero, two. It's four, negative four zero is a coordinate, but we want to state the x values of each of the roots. All right, now we have to solve it algebraically, which usually means factoring, if it's factorable. You might go to completing the square. Most people only go to that if it's required. Most people, I think, prefer to use the quadratic formula if they have a choice in the matter. If, it, if, you, if you don't think it's gonna be a clean answer, quadratic formula is probably the nicest way to go. All right, so what, why am I saying this? Well, if I have to do it algebraically and I have a leading coefficient equal to one, I might use my calculator as a support because I know that the roots are negative four and two. So x is equal to negative four or x is equal to 2. I said negative 4, but then I wrote positive 4. I don't, I don't know. It's a Monday mistake on a Wednesday. So, just think about working backwards here. If you want, make the t-chart just working from bottom to top. Bottom line is, this root is going to correspond with a factor of x plus 4. The other root is going to correspond with a factor of x minus 2. You can check it by taking each of your factors and setting it equal to 0 and solving. And you'll get x equals negative 4, x equals 2. So I led the person grading this to believe that I figured out the factors on my own. Meanwhile, I used the graph to come up with the roots, which gave me the factors. Right? So even if a question didn't ask me to create the graph, multiple choice question, for example, says which of the following are the factors of the quadratic, I might take out my calculator, look at the graph, find the roots, and then once I do that, use those roots to help me come up with the factors. It's a perfect way of doing it that allows you to get the answer correct. So now I know that my roots are definitely x such that x is equal to negative 4 or 2. All right. And it actually turns out that this is, you know, it's a check if you're just looking for factors. It's actually the solution for the roots if that's what the question's asking you to do. The root. Because it's the reverse of solving for the roots of a quadratic. So let's think about Isn't another problem. Considered solving it algebraically? Yeah, because you, I mean, you could conceivably come up with the factors in your head, right? You know, if you practice enough, you, you wouldn't want to get penalized for coming up with the factors in your head. I, I don't think, anyway. You, you'd want to be able to get full credit for something like that. And the region still allows and I allow for it for you to come up with the factors without showing an X chart and things like that. So some people can do that. If one person is capable of doing it, then everybody should get credit for it, right? So if you can get it from the graph, you're using your resources wisely. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not cheating, all right? So let's take a quick example here. Let's say you have X squared minus four equals zero, something very easy to factor. What are the factors of X squared minus four? X minus two. X minus two. X plus two. X plus two. If I were solving this, I would then set my factors equal to zero and solve. Get x equals two, and x equals negative two. So take a look at the root and compare it with the factor that gave that root. You'll notice, what? Opposite signs, right? Yeah. So if I know the root, I can get the factor just by negating the sign. Take the opposite of the sign that you're given, and you'll get the factor from the root. All right. So we're going to do a couple problems now that relate to that idea. All, all we're really asked to do is write the equation 
based off of the roots. You know, because it, it, it's really saying write the quadratic equation of each graph, right? But what that means is find the roots. In this case, x equals what and what? Negative one or three. x equals three. Find the factors. What factor would go along with x equals negative one? x plus one. What about x equals three? x minus three. Distribute. You'll get x squared minus 3x plus x minus 3. All right, double distributing. Simplify. What do you get? x squared minus 2x minus 3. Is that my final answer? Close. What should it always be equal to? Equals 0 only for the roots. But if I want the entire graph, y. y. All right, when you set it equal to y, that's allowing for it to be any part of the graph. Right? It could be any y. If you set it equal to zero, you're only looking for the parts where y is equal to zero, which would put you just at the points on the x-axis. So if I were to write equal zero, it would only represent two specific points. It would not be a parabola. Equals y makes it the whole thing. All right. Really, when you think about it, it's not, it's not too bad. I mean, it looks longer than it really is because I wrote the steps. But the second problem just kind of cut to the chase get the roots which are what and what negative two or x equals two factors yeah now just be careful about one thing we did it right here but it, it's happened often enough like you, where people have screwed this up and I don't think it's a big mistake but the regents does and it, they'll dock you credit for it Whatever the factor is needs to correspond with the root. So you look at these as two factors that are interchangeable. If you wrote the x minus 2 here and the x plus 2 here, they're telling us to take off a point because you haven't demonstrated that you know that the x plus 2 goes with the x equals negative 2. So just make sure your factor lines up in an obvious way with the corresponding root. All right. I, I, I think it's a, a simple enough thing to, to do consistently, but people have made that mistake in the past and I figured I'd bring it to your attention. All right, distribute it out, what do you... All right, and that's because in this case, we're dealing with a downward facing parabola, maximum vertex, the A value should be less than zero. So I'm gonna tack a negative onto it. We distribute it out just like we had already done, X squared minus four, but just pop a negative sign in front of it in which case it'll become negative x squared plus 4, and that would be our final answer. So for you, you just had to reverse signs. So in your notes, you would just pop a negative, a negative, and then just reverse these two signs, and you're good. The good thing about the problems that give you graphs is that you have the ability to check them immediately. And I've left the calculator on this whole time torturing you. Might as well put it to good use. If I were to take a look at, uh, I'll just do the second one here, negative x squared plus four. I'll just do it in six. The question would be, does that look like this? Well, not exactly, because the one on the paper looks a lot nicer. But if you count boxes, you could see that the tick marks on our graphing calculator going up a total of four times going left two times, going right two times. Right? So our graphic calculator jives with the picture that you're given on the paper. Right? On the next page, it's a little bit of a different story for some of the problems because it doesn't give you a graph to compare it to. 
All right, so you have to kind of take it on faith that you did it correctly. But definitely anyone that's given, giving you a graph, you, could, you can make use of that information. All right, so pages 26 and 27, you know, they have a mixture of different problems. Numbers three and four are kind of the same deal for everything. But let's take a look at some problems between uh, five and eight, because it's saying write the quadratic equation given the zeros and whether the vertex, the vertex, vertex is a maximum or a minimum. All right, so first thing I want to address, concept of zeros means the same thing as the roots. So they're telling us that x is equal to negative three or x is equal to four. Corresponds with roots of what and what? Three. X plus three, x minus four. Distribute it out. Actually, let me, let me address the minimum first before we get into that. If it's a minimum vertex, the vertex is a minimum, what kind of parabola are we looking at here? Upward facing parabola. All right. Should the leading coefficient be positive or negative? Positive. Yeah, the A value is going to be positive, greater than zero. So what I'm going to do is pop a little plus sign in front, just as a reminder, although it's not going to have any impact on this problem. Whereas in the second problem, yeah. we're going to have x equals 7 or x equals 7. All right, there's a double root. When we say a maximum vertex, it's downward facing and the A value is negative. So the A value is less than zero. All right. So when we when we go to set this one up, we would say x minus seven times x minus seven. But in this case, we'd slap a negative sign in front of it before distributing it out. So we can go to the distance with both of these, but that's that new ingredient where we're accounting for the orientation. All right. So x squared. Minus x uh, minus 12 is equal to y for the first one. So that's just like the problems on the previous page. Now, the second one, I'm going to leave the negative out in front first and then distribute the x minus 7 times x minus 7. Oh, I need bigger parentheses for that. One thing I haven't gotten used to. X squared minus 14x plus 49. All right, so that's going to clean up to y equals negative x squared plus 14x minus 49. For number three, like this one, how do you do that? That, that's going to be this, pretty much the same idea as number six, except you're going to use x minus two, x minus two. 